drop in, and opt out. You're listening to Peace News Now with Derek J., your five-minute report on the growing peaceful resistance around the globe. Today is Thursday, January 17th, 2013. I'm Derek J. Here's what's happening in Peace News. Michael Muscal reports for the LA Times. Aaron Schwartz, the 26-year-old internet genius, was eulogized on Tuesday as a person who wanted to make the world better, but was hounded into killing himself by harsh government policies. Aaron's father, Robert Schwartz, said at the service at Central Avenue Synagogue in Highland Park, Illinois, that his son was, quote, killed by the government. Sharing the blame with MIT, he said, quote, Aaron was killed by the government and MIT betrayed all of its basic principles. Facing the possibility of a 30-year prison sentence if convicted of charges that he illegally downloaded millions of academic journal articles, Schwartz hanged himself in his New York apartment Friday. The death of one of the founders of news and entertainment website Reddit and longtime activist for an open internet has ignited outrage among many in the electronic community who viewed him as a martyr to government persecution. Schwartz was accused of stealing articles from JustOr, an academic database at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Schwartz was a longtime activist for an open internet, and it brought him into conflict with prosecutors who accused him of 13 felonies. Although his indictment on 13 felony counts was announced by U.S. Attorney Carmen M. Ortiz in Massachusetts, accounts from Schwartz's supporters say much of the -the behind-the-scenes negotiations were handled by Assistant U.S. Attorney Stephen P. Heyman. Schwartz's girlfriend, Taryn Steinbrickner Kaufman, age 31, told the Los Angeles Times on Monday, quote, Stephen Heyman has shown no interest in justice. His only interest was a notch on his belt, another young kid he could claim to put away. But I think as the case wore on, as it became clearer how weak his case was, he became more and more of a bully. She added, quote, I hope that, frankly, Steve Heyman should lose his job. Aaron's not the first person he's tried to do this to, and MIT needs to implement serious policy changes because MIT could have stopped this. They could have stopped this cold in its tracks by saying, there were no victims of a crime, and they didn't do that. Schwartz's family posted on a memorial website, quote, Aaron's death is not simply a personal tragedy. It is the product of a criminal justice system rife with intimidation and prosecutorial overreach. Decisions made by officials in the Massachusetts U.S. Attorney's Office and at MIT contributed to his death. The U.S. Attorney's Office pursued an exceptionally harsh array of charges carrying potentially over 30 years in prison to punish a an alleged crime that had no victims. MIT President L. Raphael Reif announced Sunday that he was ordering a review of the university's actions in the case. Reif said in an email to the university community, quote, Now is a time for everyone involved to reflect on their actions, and that includes all of us at MIT. According to the Chicago Tribune, Steinbrickner Kaufman, choking back tears at the service, said, quote, Aaron wanted so badly to change the world. He wanted it more than money. He wanted it more than fame. When things are hard, and he said it's the important things that are hard, you have to learn to lean into the pain. With his trial and what he's facing the last two years, he finally fell into the pain. Are you tired of the U.S. government killing people around the world? Are you tired of having to pay for their murderous rampage? Are you tired of feeling helpless to do anything about it? Well, now there's something you can do. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is money that is impossible for the government to control. Bitcoin is impossible to be counterfeited or inflated. Bitcoin is simply a peer-to-peer protocol, so it's impossible for anyone to shut down, block it, or control it in any way. If you want to see an end to the government inflating the dollar to pay for murder, then you need to start using Bitcoin today. To learn how, visit weusecoins.org. In a recent press conference with White House Press Secretary Jay Carney, a reporter told the mouthpiece for the Holy One, the great peacemaker, President Barack Obama, that she would not indulge his West Wing fantasies. This came after Carney, in poor taste, attempted a joke about the television drama, which was met by the media with silence. His attempted recovery provoked the speaking truth to power. I'm not going to indulge your West Wing fantasies. Indeed, the reporter won't indulge in Carney's fantasies. Neither will this reporter, for that matter, nor will I indulge in the fantasy of the government. That's all the time we have for today. Links to these stories can be found in this episode's show notes. For more peaceful news reports like this one, subscribe to this podcast and visit our website at peacenewsnow.com. Remember to connect with PNN on social networks and send your love mail to contact at peacenewsnow.com. For Peace News Now, I'm Derek J. Peace.